Look at this stuff. Some cereal is supposed to be good for you. I'm not going to try it. Let's get Mikey. Yeah. He won't need it. He hates everything. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. Welcome back to Mikey's Kitchen, another exciting episode of Mikey's Kitchen, and this is an especially exciting episode of Mikey's Kitchen today because we're making one of my favorite dishes of all time. This is Irish stew. Not just any Irish stew, this is the best Irish stew, the best, in fact, the best stew I would guess that you've ever had in your entire life. And you know what? Come to think of it, since we're doing the Irish stew thing through... The uh, magic of television here. Hold on. Hey! Now it's an Irish stew. Now you can make the Irish stew. Uh, a very simple recipe we're doing today. Uh, some very straightforward, simple ingredients. And I swear you're going to love this stuff. It's got, uh, starting off with one of my favorite ingredients. Bacon. Look at that. Oh, there it is, baby. Meat candy. A little bacon. I'll get up in a minute. I'll tell you exactly how much of uh of all this stuff we need i'm just going to run through real quick We've got some onions a couple of onions going on here some carrots healthy carrots good for your eyesight we've got celery we've got salt and pepper of course some mashed potatoes you know we're doing the irish we're gonna have mashed potatoes um what else do we need tomato uh tomato paste a little bit of beef beef or chicken broth and um oh yeah the chuck get yourself about two and a half pounds of it mmm two and a half pounds of meat doesn't look so appetizing when you could see the green through it but that's just my shirt but oh yeah man two and a half pounds of meat boneless if this is happens to be a boneless piece I'm gonna I'd like to add my own bone and uh what else a little bit of fresh thyme, and most importantly, the beer. The Irish beer. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> if you've got the thyme, we've got the beer, okay? <laughs> Let me give you a quick rundown of all the things that, uh, that go into this recipe, and um, I'll prepare them all as they need to be prepared, and we'll, we'll kind of walk you through it. <laughs> thing we're going to do in this glorious recipe is uh, we're going to start out cutting the meat. Start out with the meat. In fact, start out with the bacon because I love bacon. You know I love the bacon. Uh, this recipe calls for four pieces of bacon. I'm going to up it to six pieces of bacon because, well, I'm going to snack on two pieces. But the recipe itself calls for four. What you're going to want to do is cut that bacon up into little chunks, little squares of bacon, maybe one inch you know, chop it up in little bacon squares. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And while we're cutting the meat, we're going to cut this fabulous uh, chuck roast. This is a, I believe it's an arm roast, a boneless arm roast. We're going to cut that up into little one-inch cubes, kind of like, you know, stew meat size. Get rid of the fat. We don't, we're not going to need this excess fat. We can get rid of that. We're going to be using the bacon fat to cook it. I'll get to that in a minute. 
But uh, after you've got this cubed, you'll see how uh, we're going to be seasoning it liberally. With Even if you're conservative, you want to liberal, liberally salt and pepper this meat. So get your sharp knife out. Don't cut yourself. Start cutting some meat. If you got your, uh, got your meat cut into, well, that's a kind of a big piece. We'll cut that down some more. As you're cutting the meat, folks, you're making your little bite size um, pieces. Um, I try to keep in mind that you know I, I want to have, you know, probably one one or two pieces of meat in every bite, and you ha you want to get rid of the like I cut the majority of the fat off. You want to get rid of that, but um, some of the in a well marbled piece of meat. Um, feel free to leave that sort of, I don't know, that, um, where's the lens here, the connective 
tissue. I don't know how, how well you can see that, but don't be afraid to leave that in there. This is going to be a tender, uh, some tendery goodness here. You don't have to worry about it being tough or anything like that. And in fact, wait, let me get rid of this god dang cat. Here, eat some meat, get a. All right. Uh, <laughs> you're going to want to leave some of that connective tissue in there because this this um, stew has no thickening agent in it. In fact, when you're cooking it down, that, uh, that connective tissue is going to help thicken the meat, or rather thicken the stew. So you've got your, your meat here, and as I said, you're going to want to uh, salt it up, salt and pepper it up. As, where's my salt and pepper? As much of that, that uh, pepper it all up real good. Try not to sneeze. Get you some salt. Don't be afraid. It's not going to be too much. Want to make sure you really get it done well. So everybody gets a little. All right. Good enough. A little more pepper for good measure. Some more salt. Sort of knead it all together and uh, get ready to cook that up in your bacon grease. All right, let's get that bacon going over a medium to high heat. Going to get a little cast iron pan going. Already chopped my bacon up into little bacon bite sized pieces. And uh, like I said, I'm not. Threw a little extra in there for me because I like to snack on bacon. So we're just going to cook this up until it's uh, not, you know, not crispy crispy, but uh, get the fat out of it. Get as much fat out of it as you can. Okay, so now that we're at this point where we've got our bacon not ultra crispy, but not uh, not all fatty either. We're going to take it out with your little magic slotted spoon. Um, and I'm going to uh, try and do this. <laughs> it's hard to do this with the camera on at the same need a I need a, a videographer. Then we're going to put it into a pot like this one. A pot which we'll cook in later. So I'm going to take all that, all that righteous bacon out of here, get it right in the pot, get every golden morsel. Oh man, don't you just love bacon? Right in the pot she goes. Then, after you got all the bacon out of there, you are going to grab, grab your meat. Meat time. There it is. We'll just dump it right in there. Don't splash any bacon grease on you. I'm just doing it this way because I have to film and cook at the same time. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to brown that meat. We're going to make sure it's nice and brown. And then we'll move on to uh, step three.
a selfie and cooking some uh, cooking some some uh, chuck having some good Irish beer because you know you're only using one beer in the recipe so you get the other five to drink while you're making it because it takes kind of a long time because you cook it a long time because it's really worth it because it's tender uh, at the very end and it's all good so what we're gonna do is take this meat take this meat which we've been cooking and we're gonna transfer it right into the big pot that holds the bacon and leave as much uh, of the of the grease and other you know pan gunk behind as you can all right I'm making a mess here so I'm gonna turn the video camera off here and uh, transfer the meat Okay, I'm back. Now I got my hat on. I forgot my little Irish hat. <laughs> Don't you love the continuity in this show, folks? Well, we've uh, gone ahead and transferred the cooked chuck. We fried up the bacon, and that's all in the same pot. The chuck and the bacon are in the pot. We've got the grease left behind. So what do we do with all that grease and all those drippings? That's right. We cook the uh, onions in it. We're going to cook up the onion, get them nice and brown, and then we're going to add the uh, four, t what is it, four, I got to look my own recipe here, four cloves of garlic. Um, I don't have cloves, I've got the squeezy tube. But we're going to add four cloves of garlic at about the last minute of cooking that because you don't like the garlic to cook too long because it gets bitter. And then we're going to throw in the quarter cup of uh, tomato paste. Then we're going to add the beer, what's left of it. And, well, you'll see what happens. So let's cook up those onions right now. Okay, kick the heat down a little. Ooh, she's getting smoky. Might set off the old fire alarm tonight. We're going to add the onions. Get them all in there. Stir them up good. So they're golden brown and delicious. They kind of, like I said, scrape up some of that goodness in the bottom of the pan. Let them get all caramelized and wonderful. Then we'll, uh, we'll throw the garlic in. And things, are, things are starting to pick up now. Look at that. Ooh, the whole house smells, smells wonderful right now. Okay, so it's been about, uh, about four minutes. Got our onions uh, frying up all nice. And it's time to add our four cloves of garlic. And like I said, we're not going to let that cook too long because it gets funky and bitter. And i got my squeezy tube. You can mince your own garlic, whatever you like. I'm going to try and eyeball. Let's see, one. You can make sound effects. That's okay. That's about four, four cloves, I suppose. Give or take, you know. Look at that, that little ring of goodness there. We'll let that cook for about a minute and uh, just kind of toss it around. And then we're going to add our tomato paste. All right, so that's all cooked down. Uh, now it's time to add the tomato paste. Let me see if I can do two things at once here. Quarter cup of uh, tomato paste. Are we getting this? I'm filming this on a, there we go. Filming this on a, on an iPhone, so it's kind of, it's kind of tough to do, and I'm I'm sort of going fast because well I don't want to run out of uh, recording ability here. But it's going to get that all uh, fluid. There's some kind of uh, the reason we're doing this. I'm no Alton Brown, but I'm assuming it's some kind of magical chemical. Uh, Thing is happening mixing all this goodness together something something good's going on in there it's bringing out some flavors now there's only one thing left to do
Okay, we're going to, uh, now that we've got our beer added, we're just going to let it warm up a little bit. And uh, whatever you do, don't taste this right now. Because it, I tried it and it tastes completely horrible. Don't eat this now. You gotta wait until tomorrow, or you know, later on, four hours from now, before you can even try to taste this. We're also gonna add. Uh, look at the bag here. We're gonna add our dark brown sugar, just about a teaspoon of it, just to offset the uh, the bitterness in the beer. Give it a little, you know, sweet, savory, bitter. They all work together to make this wonderful dish. We're gonna mix that around in there, and then. After we let that simmer for a couple of minutes. These are Scottish bagpipes. They play a, a, a chanter bore where the chanter diameter is not the same, whereas the Irish bagpipes play a straight bore where the, the size of the chanter is the same all the way down. The Irish, these type of bagpipes were played in both Scotland and Ireland at one point in time, but they stopped being played in Ireland somewhere in the 1500s. Then in the late 1800s, another set of bagpipes was developed called the Union Pipes, or in Scotland called the Yillian Pipes, which is an Irish Gaelic word for elbow, and they're called elbow pipes because they're played by pumping your right elbow on a set of bell bellows and on your left elbow is a, is a bag the same as this. However, their volume is much quieter and they oftentimes have keys on the notes so that you can play in different key signatures and they can play two octaves of notes, whereas this set of bagpipes only plays one octave of notes. The further advancement on the union pipes or alien pipes is that they had a set of registers that when played sitting down sat across your lap and had additional keys that were played with the palm of your hand. They are the most complex instrument in the world. I got all that goodness cooking there over my shoulder and I, all my oven mitts are in the uh, are in the laundry which imagine that. But I got my cool, look at my cool, I have a bacon towel. Not everybody has a bacon dish towel but I do and um, <laughs> I'm going to uh, switch the pans up and I'll explain this next maneuver. Okay, we'll take the hot pan here, slide it on over, and we've got our magic meat pan. Can you see? It's kind of hard to see down there. Don't start, the, don't start anything on fire. There's the, uh, the bacon and the chuck. Now we've got all this other wonderful stuff. And dump that right in. Mmm. Smells good, but again, I'm fogging up my lens. Don't eat it because it's not good yet. Now that you've got all this in the pan, I'll turn the heat down a little bit until we get all ready. You're going to throw in all of your uh, carrots and all of your celery. Celery all in there. Also your one. Actually that was two. Two, three, four sprigs of garlic. And uh, we've got it all in there. I'll even throw a bone in there. You know I like to cook with the bones. We get our bone in there. You don't have to do that. You can forego the bone. <laughs> Actually don't forego the bone. Throw it in there. What do you got to lose? Uh, Make sure we've got all our veggies in. Oh, nothing goes to waste. Now, our, our beer has not provided enough liquid, sadly. So, we're going to add enough broth. Hold on, i got to open my broth. While we're at it, here's a little broth tip. When you open the broth, it's got this weird kind of a top on it and it perforates the little seal in there that makes you think you know you don't want people putting any chemicals in your broth but don't fear that's all normal what we're gonna do is add about two and a half cups enough to come to the top of those vegetables just kind of barely get to the to the top of everything make sure everything's got enough juice to cook in and sort of mix it around 
It's really hard to do this and film at the same time, but you get the idea. Just kind of get it all, get it all worked together, and uh, maybe throw in a little bit more juice. A little bit more juice for good measure. Oh yeah. So that's basically it, folks. Oh hi. Ah, if you're going to do Irish stew, by God, you should drink like an Irishman. Well, listen, that's it for the uh, for the tough part. The rest is, you just take that, what we've done, take your uh, take your pot, bring it to a rolling boil. Bring it up as hot as you, you know, until it starts bubbling. Mix it up a little bit, put it on the smallest burner you have, be it gas or, for you unfortunate people who have electric, put it on the crooked... Uh, small electrical coil get it down as low as you can the smallest flame the lowest setting or uh alternatively or alternately you can put in a crock pot just put the crock pot on low let that sucker cook all night um in the pot i don't know three hours minimum you can even go more than that but just you know keep an eye on it stir it every every hour if you want just to kind of get things moving in there don't let the liquid boil out, but it won't because you've got it covered. Keep it covered, and then uh, we'll we'll show you how to thicken it later. Don't be putting uh, starch in it or potatoes or flour or any of that stuff. There's there's no doing that. We're gonna let the uh, we're gonna let the stew do the work. So you can do what the let the let the stew do what the stew do. We'll uh, we'll ch we'll check back with you after we're done. Uh, it's hard to hold hard to hold the phone I'll do this it's like a big long selfie yeah well just let it cook all night or you know for a few hours and uh i'll show you how to do the rest in the morning cat likes to hang around while i'm cooking well here we are after here you gotta get down kitty um the next day we've got the, the stew's been cooking for quite some time. Let's take a look at, uh, that's what we've kind of ended up with. It's, it looks more like, more like soup than stew, really. And there's a reason for that. Like I said earlier, don't put any, any thickening agents in that. What we're going to do is this. First, make some Irish coffee, because that's very important. You know, when you're making Irish stew. Ah, now, we move it over from small flame over to big flame. And if you haven't already done it, are you good? There we go. Uh, if you haven't already done it, take out your thyme sprigs. And the reason we don't pull the little leaves off is because, well, then you have to be fishing all that stuff out of there. Now you just grab your big thyme twigs and your bone, if you put a bone in it like I did, get all that out of there. And just we're gonna bring this to a a rolling another another heavy rolling kind of a boil we're just gonna cook it out we're gonna let this thicken and we're gonna end up with some amazing stew it's almost stew eating time and I'm getting very excited so this would be a good time to start preparing your potatoes I have potatoes and I was thinking about you know peeling them and boiling them and making the whole mashed potatoes but you know that's a whole nother show so for me because i'm hungry we're just gonna get some i know potatoes in a bag but still it'll serve the purpose so i'm gonna make potatoes in a bag we're gonna uh, let this thicken stand by
All right, we've been bubbling away here for say 10 minutes or so. And as you can kind of start to see, being in a mess, let's turn the heat off and let's let, it off, let everything calm down. What you're getting here is, if you want, it's hard to see with all the steam. You won't see it, uh, you'll see it starting to thick up. When it cools a bit, it'll thick up, thicken up even more. And if, if it's, if it's not as thick as you want it, cook it a little more. But don't cook it too much or you'll burn the bottom. You know, don't let it boil too much. Um, let this cool a little bit and I like to skim off. There's a lot of still bacon grease hanging around in here. And, uh. Just, you know, oils from the meat, things like that. You can skim off the top a bit before you, uh, before you keep going. So now that your, um, your stew is skimmed, cooled down a little bit, take your potatoes. And again, we didn't show you how to make mashed potatoes because I think you've, you've all mastered that by now probably. If not, uh, get a hold of me. In fact, while we're on the topic of getting a hold of me, if you have uh, a recipe that you think is worthy of putting on TV... Or if you have a question or um, a suggestion of what you want me to cook next, give us a call. Write us a letter, 218-349-5520, uh, 127 East Sheridan Street, or just stop on by City Hall, drop a letter, whatever you need to do. And we'll take care of you. We'll, we'll cook what you want, or we'll come to your kitchen and film you. Um, that being said, let's let's get this meal ready. Okay, so here goes. Big uh, moment of truth here. I'm going to just have a little bit because it's still early. Make you a little righteousness reservoir there in the middle. Then... Sorry, should have had all this stuff prepared before I started filming, but here we go. Ooh. Oh, you have no idea how good this is, folks, until you make it. And you should make it, because it's good, good. All right, that's enough. This isn't exactly, uh, this isn't exactly diet food here, folks. You know, you're cooking with bacon and beer, and, you know, you only live once. Uh, it's way better than even I thought it would be. If you can make this today, make this today. There's Irish stew. Thanks for tuning in to Mikey's Kitchen. We'll see you next time.